Nicodemus asked, How can a man enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? And we asked, Can you guess who was so privileged as to be born twice from the same mother, first physically, then spiritually? Ah, you're thinking, I know this one. It's St. Augustine, whose mother, St. Monica, we honor today. You're right. But there's more to that story and we're telling it today because today is the day in the year 1944 when Pope Pius XII instituted the feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary for the Universal Church. The introduction to this feast in the St. Andrew Missal says that Pius XII did this so as to obtain by her intercession peace among nations, freedom for the church, the conversion of sinners, the love of purity and the practice of virtue. Just as St. Monica's intercession aided the conversion of her son, instilling in him a love of purity and the practice of virtue, so we have our Blessed Mother whose intercession merits us the same. In this video, we examine four parallels between St. Augustine's spiritual rebirth under his mother, St. Monica, and our own spiritual rebirth under our Blessed Mother. Number 1. St. Augustine stayed away from his mother because he was unfaithful to God. How many times do we do that? Stray away from our Blessed Mother only to discover we've strayed away from God? Or avoiding his mother because it's really God we're hoping to avoid? Judas chose the halter, but we choose the salter. Number 2. St. Augustine says of his mother that she went through more when she gave me my spiritual than when she gave me my corporal birth. It is said that Our Lady bore no pains at the birth of Christ but experienced her birth pangs at the foot of the cross when the sword pierced her soul. On that particular occasion, Christ, like a midwife, presented the son to the mother and mother to the son. But the interesting thing is St. John's mother was right there. Was Jesus making staying arrangements for his mom? Of course not. He was giving us our spiritual mother. And so John the beloved disciple took home two mothers that day. The one of his physical birth and the one of his spiritual birth. If we are to be like the beloved disciple, we too ought to have two mums as Jesus wills. One from earth and one in heaven. Number three. In the conversion of her son, St. Monica worked with St. Ambrose who was the Bishop of Milan. As Queen of Apostles, Our Lady too works with the bishops for the conversion of souls. To convert 9 million Mexican souls, Our Lady of Guadalupe worked with Juan, Bishop Juan de Zumaraga, who sought her intercession. And she works even now through the handful of Catholic bishops that remain today. It is interesting to note that in the game of chess, you can wipe out the entire enemy with just the Queen and the Bishop working together. It's how St. Monica checkmated St. Augustine. Number 4. As it turns out, St. Monica went to her eternal reward after her earthly work was completed, which happened to be nine days after bidding goodbye to her recently baptized son. This reminds us of the novenas we pray through Mary's intercession, the first and foremost being the novena preparatory to Pentecost, which was the first novena ever prayed by the Church. We will pray it this season just as the disciples did below the mantle of Mary, beginning the Friday after the Ascension and ending on the Vigil of Pentecost, nine days. Let us end this short segment with these words from the book Month of Mary. If the pious Monica obtained the conversion of Augustine by her prayers, much more will Mary obtain God's grace for us who are her children and for whose eternal salvation she feels much more zeal than ever Monica did for that of her beloved child. So if you want to stay close to God, stay close to His mother and hold on to those beads real tight. Here are a few indulgent aspirations to the heart of Mary. The links are in the description.